Good morning, my brother. How are you? Very well. How are you doing? Very well. How is the morning there? The morning is uh, quite well. We are glad to, to have you here for this very interesting conversation. And uh, we'll actually get yes. straight into it. Um, let's start off with what we've seen so far with the ministerial uh, positions that have been given, the cabinet positions that have been given. What are your thoughts from our first cabinet under the new government? Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, um, they are just uh, settling down. Uh, but uh, suffice to say that uh, the cabinet still is still uh, big. Uh, we expected a cabinet of less than 20. That, those were the aspirations as we were campaigning. Um, 24 member cabinet is too huge, too huge for se the severity of our problems as a country. You know, when you uh, the cabinet is appointed, you signal um, through that action what you want to do in terms of fiscal consolidation, which is needed because the country <laughs> has fiscal crisis. So we could have done better. Uh, they could have done better with the ministries below below, um, below 20. I think when they are campaigning, they are talking about uh, you know, 16 somewhere there, below 20, there are all these debates. So it's very important to, you know, to meet the aspirations of the people from day one. So 24 member cabinet, too huge uh, for a country with a fiscal crisis. I can tell you, uh, in our proposal, uh, as a political party, when we were campaigning, we even integrated already in our manifesto, we had proposed 18 member cabinet already done. I can see already in this cabinet, there are a lot of related functions that have been scattered in many ministries. Let me give you an example. We still have Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Livestock and Fisheries. That is one. It's supposed to be one ministry. Again, we have um, Minister of um, uh, Green Economy. We, we, we appre I appreciate the, the technology, Green Economy. But there's a Minister of Green Economy and Environment, Ministry of Water and Sanitation, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. We could have done better. Some of those functions could have been related. I think green economy uh, we could have been in, attached to the means of lands and even water and sanitation. So we could have done better to bring the ministries uh, uh, to the government should have done better to bring the ministries to about um, uh, twenty or below. Hmm. Well, we, we, we still have a, yes. well, when we look at some of the appointments that have been made by the president, yes. They have been received with uh, mixed emotions. But from your end, you are saying that uh, the president could have done better in terms of uh, cutting down with the ministries and the ministers that have been uh, appointed so far. But according to you as uh, opposition political party, do you think that uh, maybe some of these ministries just really need to be maintained and look at uh, issues um, that affect the many people out there across the country uh, because when we see some of these ministries be incorporated as one, sometimes one end is not really focused on, and usually it's just one thing that is focused on. No, not at all. Not at all. When you, you you have a bloated government at the top, you you, you suck away resources meant for self delivery. I mean, that, that 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 really cannot be an argument. When when you restructure an organization, just like a, a, a government. You, you must make it again and, and release resources for actual service delivery. What we need now is more money uh, for service delivery and also to motivate the actual frontline workers, the teachers, the nurses, the doctors, the agricultural extension officers, the social workers. That's where the money must go. I, I know. I was the chairman of the budget in the parliament. I know. There is no need to have this uh, multiplicity of ministries. You create a bloated uh, government at the top and deny uh, resources for actual service delivery. By the way, Government is spending fifty percent of its budget on on the wage, uh, and therefore on, a, on on the structure of um, the government in terms of number of ministries. The the, 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 the new government should have signaled uh, an intention for right sizing government so that we begin public sector reforms to bring the wage bill to acceptable threshold, which is about uh, thirty percent plus minus. We need to release resources for actual service delivery. You cannot have a government existing for itself. You government taking fifty percent of the budget for wage. So what is there to provide services <laughs> the government might be claiming to provide? Where will the money come from to provide uh, um, support for students in the colleges? Where will the money come from, you know, to provide medicines in our hospitals? Where will the money come from, you know, to provide a good, better infrastructure for our people, to provide water and sanitation? There must be deliberate you, you, you measures from the very beginning. 
you speak about yes. money coming through and you, you put up a very good example of, for example, the students uh, that also need um, this money. One of the promises that the UPND government gave, at least while in the end of position, was selling the presidential jet, at least this money being channeled to issues such as meal allowances. But from an interview that the UPND spokesperson, Colina Smetua, did on, on Costa on Sunday, he says, well, that might not actually be realized or actualized because of the realization that um, this presidential jet is actually a, an asset for the, for the Zambian army and not really for the president. What do you think, think this says for the promises that was made by the UPND government? Do you think they will be actualized? I think um, that is politics. I think when you are campaigning, you must be very careful. You must be very factual. Um, so for, for us, our politics are that uh, we must be very factual from the very beginning. What we said last year, three years ago, we should repeat it today. That is a politics, for example, mm -hmm. we propagate in our political party. So the that's issue that's of selling, um, mm -hmm. the issue of selling the, 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 the jet um, was unnecessary and it's not practical. And then it makes sense because you discount it. It's now second hand. So you are going to make a big loss. It's like you, you buy a, a BX from Toyota, you drive it even for a day, you take it back to sell it, you, you discount it because it's no longer zero mile. So the selling of the jet does not make sense and it must not be sold. And I think um, when uh, our colleagues were campaigning, that was a careless uh, politicking. Uh, it's, it's not, it's, I, I support that it must not be sold. That was politicking. It's something you come to, 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 the, to, the, to the public and apologize to say, no, I made a mistake to say that. I, I think there's a honor in apologizing. Selling a jet does not make sense. Why, why, how many students is this going to support? <laughs> the, the student loan provision is every it's a huge amount and we must start saving money simply reduce cabinet I mean, let's start reducing excesses in government so that we can have money uh, every year uh, you know uh, you know secured to provide social services for our people do you think this also makes zambians lose trust in the zambian opposition that now the zambian opposition will be making promises that they will not achieve because people have seen this regime after regime where promises are made but very few of them are uh, actually actualized. Some of them are backtracked. So do you think this now <laughs> has an impact on you as an opposition leader? No, that's not, it's less or less as opposition. I can tell you, for example, even our, 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 our party, um, um, uh, as small as it is, we're very consistent. And I can tell you, you can ask me, what did we promise which is not realistic? For example, on education, we said the right um, offer for, for provision of education is access to education for all. That is a new phraseology in the developmental discourse. You don't say free education. It's not possible now. 18 million people, <laughs> when we went to university, we were just four or five million. And now there are more than two universities. That time there was only ones, it was easy. Now how many universities do we have which are registered by the higher education authority? And all students in this country, not only on the CPU, deserve support for their other bits. Whether you are at Nkrumah, whether you are at Nkrumungushi, or CPU, or UNSA, or Cavendish, or UNLAS, or Catholic University, or Rusang University. The buzzer to a Zambian child. And therefore, what we need is um, sustainable uh, uh, um, um, arrangements uh, to support our students. There are many pathways. And the best approach is the student loan approach, where students get loans, and when they finish studying, they pay back. Even all of us went to invest in so-called free education. We should have paid back. Because mm -hmm. by not paying back, we have denied children in Chitokologi, in the Chama, to have a, a university education. Because when you are educated through university and college, your capacity to earn is enhanced. And therefore, you must plow back. That is how sustainable uh, access to education is provided in countries that have managed. Uh, uh, so I can tell you that there is no way they can lose hope in us opposition if parties before promised what they could not do. The issue is they must look, case, look at the political parties case by case. We do not promise that it's not impossible. At the risk of losing elections or not getting enough votes, we say, for us, we are talking about access to education, not free education. And we are very clear even during the campaigns. So the issue is that we must take policies to the next level and the promise things that are received and that are doable so that we do not discourage people in engaging in politics. Because once we say this and we don't provide, we are basically making politics dead and people begin to shun politics and then, uh, and then our democracy stop growing. Mm. So we must be realistic and we must issue statements that are researched so that we say that is doable. 
So there is no need uh, for Zambian people to fall for, for promises that, that don't work. President we Hunter, had promises, more, you have more money in your pocket and so on, but the how was not explained. Free education, the how was not explained. And therefore, going into the future, the, the voters, you Zambian people, must critically analyze what each political party says so that uh, you, uh, you judge them properly using you know, your research and evidence. President Hamdudu, thank you so much for joining us on the Diamond Breakfast Show. We appreciate your time and we look forward to more of this uh, conversations, more of these conversations, rather.